Hi, my name's Charlie Thorburn. Welcome to Mordor Gun Dogs. We're going to talk about sitting and staying today. So what is sitting and staying? People often say, oh yeah, my dog can sit and stay when it's in the kitchen or when, I'm, when there's nothing else going on. But ultimately, like we talked about with the healing, start with the finished article. So this is Chino. Now I've told Chino to sit and basically wherever I do, wherever I go, whatever I do to distract her, she stays there, okay? Anything from jumping around to throwing a ball at her feet. That is ultimately what we're looking for with a dog that knows how to sit and stay, okay? Because there's no point having to go sit, sit, stay, stay, stay all the time to them. We want to just be able to say it once, they do it, and then that's us. We can tune out. Now, Chino's maybe a bit of an extreme. She's a six-year-old dog, seven-year-old dog. I mean, I could go inside and have my lunch and I'd come back out and she'd still be sitting here because she's awesome. But we want to start with the best and aim towards it. So this is the best. This is what we all want to aim towards. It does also help that Gino's incredibly lazy. So lying around, having her tummy tickled to her is an absolute dream. So if that counts as, a, as sitting and staying, then she's absolutely delighted. But what we're going to do is we're going to now go back to the beginning and we're going to show you how we start trying to get to this place. Another quick point about sitting, the command sit. We don't want to have to repeat it. We don't want to have to keep saying sit, 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 stamping our feet, raising our hand, raising our voice. We want to be able to say sit really nicely and calmly and boom, the dog just sits down. Someone once told me it's like your dog having its legs cut off. You say sit, oof, they're just down on their bum really quickly. We want that attentiveness and focus. If we don't have that, then we haven't got the dog really with us. If we're saying sit and they're staring off into the distance, kind of going, Ooh, I might do it in a second. It's not good enough. We want it to be really quick, really instantaneous and really focused on us. So Chino, come on Chino, sit. Good girl, come on, come on in. Sit. That really quick, you know, you, she couldn't do it any quicker. Okay, now her reward, sit. Out. We make the game quick and fun for her as well, okay? So she sits really quickly, I throw a ball, she sits, and then I send it for her, and she enjoys it. She enjoys getting the reward for sitting really quickly. So the point of showing you uh, an older dog like Chino is so you can set your standard and set your target. This is what we're looking for, a dog that once they've sat, they just stay there, no matter what excitement come in their way. Uh, and when we tell them to sit, they do it straight away. Not in a half-hearted, like a teenage, 16-year-old teenage girl, oh, sitting is so boring, I can't be bothered. We want it done with enthusiasm, okay? Go back to my catchphrase, you get out what you put in. You put in enthusiasm, they'll put enthusiasm in as well. So th this is little Waffle, and he's very keen on a ball. So sit, sit. Good boy. So I just say sit, have the ball in the right sort of place. If it's up high, if I'm waving it around, he's going to get too excited. I want it just to be sort of close enough to him. But if he jumps up at it, I take it away. Okay, and then his reward is he just gets to pick it up. Okay, we can do all this on the lead. We can do it off the lead. But I tend to find with especially wriggly little young, young dogs, whether they're cockers or anything else, it's easier to do it on the lead because we've got them kind of slightly calmer and more controlled. Sit. Sit. When he's... In that right position, we're just saying sit, sit, sit. Now, Waffle is very young and very silly. So if I try and walk away from him, if I try and make him do it too long, none of it's going to work. It just needs to be a little short, little short lesson. Waffle, sit, sit. Good boy. Now, you can use a biscuit. You can use whatever you like. I'm just combining my training with a little retrieve for him. This is the, ba the basics of it. If I now put the lead down and walk away, fix the lead up, he runs away. He has no idea how to stay there. And we don't want to waffle. We don't want to, we don't want to ask him to do any of that. At the moment, all we're trying to do is just that every time I say sit, he just sits there and he looks at me. Sit, sit. Come on waffle, sit. Lots of short little repetitions over and over again, but I'm only making him stay there for a very short period of time. And then, then I let him have his little retrieve, his little bit of praise, because that's what he wants, that's his reward. So when you're training your dog to sit and stay, and you're trying to be really precise, to help you, but also to help the dog, there's a number of things you can do. I've seen myself get a tin of spray paint, so I've drawn a circle on the grass, or I've drawn a line on the grass. The, the purpose of this circle is so that when you see the dog's foot come out of it, 
you can put the dog's foot back. To help the dog as well, another really good thing is a step. Because if you tell a dog to sit on a step, and at, they've got to make a real concerted effort to step down off that. And as soon as you see them doing that, you just go back and put their foot back. And it's really clear for you and for the dog. They're either on the step or they're not on the step. You can do this also with the change of texture from the grass to the tarmac. If we tell the dog to sit on the grass and a foot comes on the tarmac, we put them back onto the grass. And last is a, a place board. Now I never ever used to use these at all. And I've actually just started using one in the last few years. And I find in the winter when we're training inside, when it's raining, it's a really useful thing. It acts exactly the same way as a step. So the dog's sitting on it, we can walk around in circles and if their foot comes off, we just put their foot back on again and encourage them to stay on the board. And if they need to swivel around, that's okay as long as they don't come off the board. It's not a long-term thing. We need to get rid of it once the dog got the concept of it, but it's a good starting block. So a step, the change in texture, a place board, or just draw a circle in the grass so that you're really, really strict with yourself and the dog to make sure you get it right. So this is little Mash. Now Mash has got a really, really itchy bum. She shiggles, she shiggles, she shiggles around. She can't help herself sit. Sit. She can sit and stay. But you can see she finds it exhausting. Okay, so we need to practice with her. So we're gonna start with the step. Sit, mash, sit. Suddenly we're using the step. We're having huge success really quickly. Now it's not that, all oh, right, she sits and stays on a step, so I've got to use a step for the rest of my life. But I need to practice more with the step because she's not perfect, but she's much better there than she is here. So rather than endlessly losing, having fights with her, sit. Ah, 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 ah. Sit. And that's what we do. Every time they come off, we change our demeanor. We go from sit and calm to growling at them. Oh, you're doing the wrong thing. We put them back on the step. And then we go back over to them and we praise them. The place board's exactly the same. Mash. Sit. Okay. So, ah, 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 that wasn't for you. Sit. We can walk around them. And you can see her doing a little dance but she knows she's got to keep her feet on it. Okay, so it's a really good way of just building up that, that repetition of you've got to stay there, you've got to stay there. Ah, da, 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 da. Soon as she comes off, sit. We put her back. And it's about that speed and that response straight back to her, put her back. So almost when I start going towards her, she turns around on her own, knowing she's got it wrong. So these little, little tools are just to help you and also more to the point, help the dog get it right. And if we get her so she can sit and stay on these different things, then when we put her on a, on a, on a plain bit of grass or plain bit of tarmac, she'll find it much easier because she's understood the concept. Always, always, always go back to the dog, okay? So when we leave a dog sitting and staying, mash, sit. When we leave a dog sitting and staying, we walk away, we never ever call that dog off the sit and stay. The reason we never call the dog off the sit and stay is because we are wanting to praise them for sitting and staying. So I want to praise her back here, sit. I don't want to call her off there and praise her for leaving that. It doesn't make any sense. Think about it from a logical point of view and dogs are very simple and very logical. If, I, if the only praise she gets is when she leaves that board and comes to me, why is she going to want to stay on the board? If, however, the only praise she gets is when she stays in that position and I go over and praise her, then she understands the only way I'm going to get praise is, is by waiting here and Dad will come and praise me. And if I go to him, he's going to tell me off. So it's much easier for her to understand. So if you go to a training class and they say, sit your dog down, walk away, call your dog to, to you, don't do it. Walk away and walk back to the dog. You will end up with a much calmer, much better dog than this silly idea of walking away and calling the dog to you. Because what happens is the dog's sitting there watching you get further and further away. They're getting down on their blocks. They're like your sane bolt. And boom, they're ready to go. Okay. They're anticipating you calling them and they're just waiting desperately to be called. Okay. They just want to be called. That's all they want because they get attention. They're all excited and they get wound up. But if we talk to the dog in an excited way, they get excited. But if sit, we talk to a dog in a calm sit way then they will become calm and they will learn that the only time they get praise is in a calm way when we go back to them sit and it just creates for a much more 
idyllic situation. Now, we put this into place outside, inside, in a dog bed, in the back of the car. It doesn't matter, the concept of her going somewhere and remaining there will then slot into place for her on the back of a quad bike, in the back of a car, in the dog bed in the house, all these things, it all comes from this same teaching that you go to a position, you're asked to stay there and you remain there till you're told to move. I hope this has been helpful. Remember, you get out what you put in and we'll see you next time.